Hey up everybody, welcome back to the Aldo YouTube channel. Again, another exclusive just for the YouTube channel, not for podcasting platforms. And today we are going to be talking about a system that the NBA uses that cycling could implement, and that is something called the draft. Now, I get that a lot of people listening to this will be cycling fans and not NBA fans. So just a quick summary, the draft is a way... For young players and I think players from different nationalities to come across to the NBA which is the like basketball association in America and they can then get picked by the teams in a system which is kind of like a lottery so in in an easy way to explain it the worst team from the previous year has the highest chance of picking first which would mean, let's say, let's roll it back a couple of years. Let's say when Tadi Pogacar won v Tour de l'Avenir, he would have been in an, a draft. But let's say that then NTT, because they came bottom of the UCI standings for that year, would have, let's just say, they got the first pick of all these pool of under-23 riders and continental riders and what have They could have picked... Tade Pogacar and he would be on that team which would be a massively changing dynamic because that would mean that a not so good team would have a really good rider and that's kind of a way that we're trying to implement this is that the really good talent of the future instead of being just being continually fed to the really good teams and just kind of fueling their prosperity instead it's going to be spread out a bit more it means that the worst teams are going to get some good riders for the future makes good gonna make things a lot more equal and a lot more entertaining for us as viewers. So in the NBA the draft happens in December? November? November. Similar time to when we want to hold it for cycling. Yeah, similar time when we want to hold it because it's the off season. There's not many races going on, which means that it's just a it's a good downtime to add a little bit of an injection of excitement and just like thinking and people guessing what's going on and it's yeah i think that's just a good time to for it to be held before the season starts and we also kind of want it late november early december because then it gives the chance for these new riders to go on like a training camp with the teams before the season restarts in whatever january february depending on when you consider the season to be starting which varies from person to person so if we want it in roughly November. Now, it's going to be a bit of a complicated process to explain who's eligible for this, and I think Cam explains it uh, a bit better than I can. So, I mean, who's who's eligible for the MB for the uh, our cycling draft? All right. So, what we've kind of agreed on is that it's any continental level rider of any nationality is eligible for this draft. They just have to make themselves eligible. You know, so ideally, you know, they'd be young, but it could literally be any age. But beyond a certain age, someone's basically an idiot if they apply for the draft. If someone's 27 and peaking mm. with no potential, they're not going to get picked anyway. Yeah. Um, that's just how it is. So ideally, it's going to be young riders from the continental level. Um, and then once they get to, if there's already like, you know, X at pro conti level you know they've got a lot of like young riders who are you know 20 21 22 so what we're saying is any riders who are under the age of 23 at pro continental level they can make themselves eligible for the draft but they um then if they are selected by a team so say who did you give as, as an example I think his name's like Julius Johansson Price. Yeah, so he's the Team Pursuit guy, right? Yeah. So really good world champion in Team Pursuit. I think he was like junior world champ or something. Yeah, he's a hitter. Yeah, just straight up hitter. But then he's signed to Uno X until 2022. So say he gets drafted by Ineos and he then has to see out the remainder of his contract with Uno X and then once 
2023 rolls around, he can then join Ineos. Um, I imagine this is something similar to what's happened with Tom Pidcock because he's basically had a contract in the works for like a couple of years, mm. but it's kind of ahead of the game. Um, but this is very similar to what happens in the NBA anyway. So a player that, say, plays for a Spanish team in the Spanish league, which is probably the second biggest league in the world for, yeah. for basketball. Yeah. Um, they may have a, already have a contract in place whereby once they're drafted, they then play overseas for a year at their previous club, see out their contract and then join their NBA team the year after. Yeah. So yeah, basically anyone's eligible, but it's more likely to be the younger, um, higher prospect people who are then taken um, first in the draft. Um, I think we also agreed that if someone was at continental level but made themselves eligible for the draft, then they, but to say they didn't get selected, um, they are then fine to just go and return to their continental team. They haven't like um, scrapped their contract and their continental team basically can't take it personally that they've entered the draft if they're a top prospect. But if they do get selected into the draft, the Continental team can't really do anything about it. They've kind of just lost this prospect. Um, they don't really have to get bought out of it. Yeah. That's just a clause that would be put in place. Mm, yeah. And a team will select a rider based on what fits their team best. So you won't... Just because Tade Pogacar won the Tour de Lavene doesn't mean that a team will pick him because they may not have ambitions to win a Grand Tour. They might be more of a cobble team. For example, the Koenig. But... Like that's that's just an example. And I think something else important to note is that just because someone's picked first, second, third overall does not mean they're a good rider. Yeah. You know, teams make mistakes when picking like this. Like there's a lot of busts in the NBA who were picked like high up that weren't good. Yeah. And and, t- and good riders can be missed mm. early on and be taken later on. Yeah. So what we mean by taken later on is that I mean NBA in the draft, there are two rounds. I'm not sure how many teams there are in the NBA, but there are two I think rounds. there's 30. 30, so it's a lot of teams. So there are two rounds. And, of course, the worst teams pick first. So what we're suggesting is that there are 19 teams in the World Tour at the moment. So we're suggesting a two-round process like the NBA does. And it will be two rounds of 19 picks. Now, the first pick is determined by where you placed, where a team placed in the previous year. So again, hate to be beaten on them all the time, but Quebec, Arasos, Israel, Kofidis. Those guys will have the highest percentage chance of being selected to get the first picks. And this will just be decided through... Because they're lower down, they will have, I think it's like a 14% chance of being selected. Just basically like a like a lottery ball machine. They will just have more balls in the, in the big spinny wheel. And so therefore they just have more chance of being selected if somebody picked out their number, okay? And then from them, you will work your way up the UCI standings all the way up to your Yumba Vismas, your UAEs, your Ineos's. But the chance of those teams at the top being selected for the first pick is going to be much smaller to a point where it's about 0.5%. This is different to the way that the NBA does it because in the NBA, the top teams aren't even eligible to get the top picks. But in our system, we're considering that the chance of an Ineos and a Jumbo Visma and a UAE being able to pick isn't impossible but it's really small but you could therefore get a really good rider who's like the next Tour de France winner somehow through some very very good luck gets selected to the top teams rather than the smaller teams again so this is just a nice way of distributing the next future talents hopefully more towards the bottom teams to raise them up and then you know the I mean it's I say the worst riders, they're still obviously very good, but for teams, the ones which may not fit exactly what Ineos might want, 
will get selected later on because they're a little bit worse and that should hopefully just raise the scales more in the advantage of the smaller teams and just help them out in the future and that's kind of the way that we're going with it I've, I've it's it seems fairly straightforward in my mind but i get that because this is an audio format it might be a little bit harder because we don't have any like visuals to explain it to you um yeah I think there's just yeah. there's a couple more points to cover, and that's like trading the draft picks. Yeah. So, like Patrick's just said, the better the team performed in the year before, the greater their. I'm sorry, the smaller their odds are, of getting the best picks. But also, that doesn't mean that they can't get the best picks. Um, but for instance, let's think of a team that we haven't talked about yet. Bora. <laughs> Bora Hansgrohe, say they kind of finished mid-table, but then they wanted to they wanted to get Tom Pidcock, yeah. their first overall pick. So therefore, they traded with. Let's just say Ineos had the first overall pick. Yeah. They traded with Ineos. They're like, okay, we'll get. We want that first overall pick. What do you want from our assets, our riders, our future picks? Yeah, in order for us to get that and they could be like you can't give us anything to match that or they could be like do you know what give us um, Patrick Conrad Patrick Conrad and Glow Schachner yeah and a few and a 2025 first overall pick so really it's a long game yeah or and you know and you give us Tom Pidcock yeah. uh, so you give us the first overall pick yeah and that's how it would work. So you can move up in the draft equally if you are if you get the first first overall pick. So say you are Bahrain, yeah, and you somehow looked out and got it. Um, you might be like, okay, we want to, we kind of want this guy, but we we think that he's projected to kind of go about eighth. Yeah. So we're going to trade down with someone who really wants the first overall pick. Yeah. So what assets could we actually get by trading down? Like what? What riders could we get in that deal that could help us? Like, what kind of riders yeah. do we need, or what kind of riders do we need that could help this future prospect? Mm. So it's very much like picks can can actually be worth a lot more than some current riders because everyone loves like the potential word. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, especially with nowadays when you're seeing the likes of Pogacar, Bernal, Sivakov, Avnepool, Zhao. <laughs> Just all these guys are just doing so well who are just coming straight into their like first few years. Just makes sense that teams might be focused more on that. And it's just a bit like a uh, it's like a chess game. And it's just going to be a lot more exciting for people to try and predict. It's going to create more buzz around cycling to have these off season events going on. It'll create just yeah a bit more flair. Maybe it'll bring more people to cycling. That'll bring more revenue, more sponsors. It's just a hell of a lot more exciting than what we have at the moment, which is that there's that just doesn't exist. And just, you know, you might get an under-23 rider who just gets shuffled away into a team and you've never heard of them. But the thing is, if you're like, oh, this guy's the first round pick. Like, he, he was, like, this guy was first the first pick. This guy was the fourth pick. These guys are really good. I need to keep an eye on them for the next season. And that just means that you know more about the future rather than, oh, who the hell is this Tade Pogacar guy? Where's he come from? You know, unless you're really in the cycling, no. You don't really understand who the under-23 guys are who are coming up. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And we're, not, we're also not saying that this is you know the perfect way to do it. We're just saying that this is something that could make cycling more fun. There's not, we're not saying there's no holes in this whole plan. And if you can think of any holes in it, let us know because us know. we want that engagement. Let us know. Yeah, let us know at Aldo Cycling on Instagram and Twitter. That is O W D O Cycling. Uh, give us a follow. Give us a like. There's lots of stuff going on around there. Previews for races, kind of like a like a stage by stage for what's who we think is going to finish in the top three. Like reports at the end of the stage. Uh, just good stuff like that some good old photoshopping going on just gets put on occasionally but I think we've covered everything we want to talk about with the, this 
cycling UCI draft style thing that we've got going on. Let us know if you agree. Let us know if you disagree. Give us a like. Subscribe. Come back later because there's going to be lots of cycling stuff going on. We've got a couple of things lined up. And uh, uh, yeah, all that's left to say is to keep your masks on, stay safe, and we will uh, talk to you next time.